and, and crypto really has gone sideways. So I agree with you. That's a short term bullish indicator. Um, again, I wouldn't look at that as a longer term signal. Hello everyone, today our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about the real reason for the current and consistent crash of the crypto and traditional market and how long the bear market could last, with a lot of mind-blowing price predictions. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin recovered from daily lows after the Bank of England said it will take steps to address the liquidity crunch in the government bond market. The announcement raised hopes that central banks, including the U.S. Federal Reserve, are nearing their pain threshold concerning the market turmoil and might soon abandon the policy tightening that has roiled crypto and traditional assets this year. The BOE on Wednesday morning said it will begin to buy long-dated gilts in unlimited quantities starting on Wednesday to stabilize the UK's bond market, which has recently turned volatile on concerns that the government's plan to cut taxes will put its finances on an unsustainable path. The bank also said it was suspending planned bond sales under its quantitative tightening program. Bitcoin bounced from its daily low of $18,550 to reach $19,100 following the BOE's intervention. Meanwhile, the yield on the 10-year UK government bond fell by 28 basis points to 4.12%, and the pound slipped nearly 1% to $1.06. I think it is because it creates this fear and panic in the investing public, which then reacts, right? So, so it's going to that psychology of an investor. But the beautiful thing about it is the charts are amazing in that they tell you when the changes are going to come. And in fact, if you would, so let me, let me show like my dollar chart here, my Dixie chart. Um, take a look at this guys. So like the dollar had this big fall today, but look at where it was. Like the chart was telling you, like, look at this trend line pivot high from early 2022 to this high and to this high. And so really it told you something was going to happen. And, and another chart that's just fascinating is the British pound versus the U S dollar. And like, this is where we know that the, the Bank of England intervened by saying that they were going to start buying bonds again. But what's amazing is the chart almost told you something like this was going to happen. And this is what I always say is that the charts tell you news is going to come out or something's going to affect the, the price of something. You just don't know what it is. Like, I didn't know the Bank of England was going to intervene. I just knew that, look at this. It was a 19, from 1985, the British pound was hitting the double bottom. And so the beauty of the chart is it's it's telling you something is likely going to happen. And then miraculously, the Bank of England intervenes. And then you have this bounce that goes on. And the, and the stock market here in the U.S. really ripped up today as well. We saw some gains in crypto as well. And, and this is one of the things I pay attention to. I do follow Twitter, not because I think it's a great asset for me to trade off of, but in fact, it's a great asset for me to use as a contrarian indicator. And the key to a good investor is being able to figure out when it's at these kind of maximum megaphone periods where it's just overwhelmingly biased in one direction. And then that's usually the inflection point. What else do you use for that? A fear and greed index or something else? Yeah, so the fear and greed index is okay. It does give you a general sense, but I haven't found it to be a great for like exact reversals. I would tell you another thing to look for is like, I'll tune into the, the, the financial media and the financial media, like, you know, you'll have on, you know, CNBC here in the U S and, and, and they'll be talking all bearishly and all this and that, and like, oh, this is so scary. And you can almost gauge from that when it's, when it's really powerful that they are in one direction, that it's about to reverse. I do think that we are headed into a global recession. But remember that recessions don't, you know, the markets don't trade in a straight line. So, so you're going to get to these technical levels where people get overly bearish and then you get these technical bounces. Like for instance, when the bank of England does something like this, um, and then what you'll see is people start to sway and start to get bullish again. And then as soon as they start getting bullish in a bear market, you have to be on alert. 
then it's likely not going to go too much further. So I don't think, for instance, a one-day bounce is all we're going to get here. But I certainly do think we are going to go lower across the board on all stock markets and, and really start to head lower. I'm kind of isolating down, and I can show my S&P chart here. Sure. SPX. There's a pivot point that I'm watching. So number one, notice where we bounced today. We bounced right at the lows from June. So a technical support level right there. I think this is a short-lived bounce. You might get a week, week and a half, two weeks out of it. But ultimately, we have to go retest the pre-COVID collapse highs right here. So that's down around 3370 on the S&P 500. And that makes a lot of sense, right? If you think about the Federal Reserve sucking all this liquidity out of the market, it makes sense that we have to go back to the pre period before all this liquidity was put into the market. So, so that would be my next stopping point. I think by year end, we get there. I'm in the camp where you're going to have two cycles to this bear market. The first cycle we're in right now, which is a cycle where the Fed is tightening, there's no more money printing, and so valuations have to come down. The second cycle is going to be after the Fed pivots, right? So the Fed is going to eventually pivot. We saw kind of the Bank of England already do that, right? So at that point, you're going to see a big bounce in the market because the Fed is pivoted. Everyone's going to say, oh, they're going back to easy money policy. I don't agree with that. I think the pivot is basically just not hiking rage anymore. And the next cycle is going to be when the economy slips into a recession and that without Fed printing of money, if you think back to every past big market drop, whether it's a recession or it was COVID or whatever, the Fed has been printing us out. And so with inflation still staying above 4%, I have a long-term horizon of like multiple years where inflation is going to be 4% or so. The Fed cannot print us out of the next recession, and the market is eventually going to realize that. And that's going to be a big earth-shattering factor for the overall market, where they're like, wait a minute, how does the, the economy get out of this recession without the help of the Fed? And that's where you see that next leg down where people say, okay, now we could be in a recession for years. I mean, it could be a multi-year recession, not just a six or 12 month recession period. Overall, to me, the, the speed at which it comes down just would dictate how big of a bounce we would get off of it. So the, the faster it would fall, like for instance, if we were to go straight into it, let's say in the next two weeks, I would actually look for a pretty solid bounce back to this pivot high right here or this pivot low. But overall, it, it wouldn't change the aspect of what I'm seeing in the charts, right? It still wouldn't change anything about what I'm looking for, where I still think we have to go at minimum down to the lower end here. And I want to show you this trend line. This is a pretty powerful trend line here to see. And look at this one right here. So this is another major trend line where this is a long term trend line where you could actually extend this out to 2009. And and basically that is the long term trend of this market. So just because we're going to 3370 or so, I still think we have to go even lower before you get to any sort of longer term bottom in the market. So I think the bottom line is, I mean, and this is the thing though, is a lot of people out there will hear this and they'll be like, oh my goodness, you know, this is horrible. We're going to keep going down. But honestly, there is so much money to be made in this market because when you do get bounces in bear markets, as you know, they're huge bounces. So you just really, it becomes a market where the good investors and traders that can read the charts can time the market much better. But when you get these bounces, they are tremendous and there's a lot of money to be made both on the long and the short side of the NASDAQ chart. And then I'm going to go to the monthly chart just because so we can see back to 2000. And what you can see in 2000, it was very similar to like, you know, the vertical nature is kind of what we've seen here. I mean, look at look at the vertical nature here. And by the way, look at how big this is compared to this. I mean, that's yeah. how scary this market is. But as you can see, I mean, you had a generally a pretty big drop, but there were some big bounces along the way. And then you went into this kind of sideways to up, like almost like a bull market within a bear market period where, where you actually could make money by just going long. Just the highs were not taken out for 15 years. And I think another good example of this would be like the, the Hang Seng market. So if we look at the Hang Seng market here, which is the Chinese stock market, and we look at this, right? So here in 2003, we, we the Hang Seng market had this insane run. You then had this epic collapse, but then look at the market since then. I mean, it gave plenty of opportunities for these ups and down mega moves where there was lots of money to be made. It just never really took out the highs and broke higher. So, I mean, if you're looking at the China stock market here, I mean, you could have gotten in at the highs of 07 and you're still down significantly on your money. And this is kind of what I expect for the U.S. stock market to go through this period 
of digestion. Another good example of this would be the EWZ, which is the uh, the the Brazilian ETF or the Brazilian stock market. And you can see here, look at this mega move from 2003 to 2008. And then you had this epic drop, which is kind of what I think is going to happen in the next, you know, between what we've already seen in the next and the next 12 months is what I'm envisioning for us. Then you're going to have these big bounces, but generally the market is trailing lower here. So I think, you know, for me, this is kind of a good playbook for what I think the U.S. stock market and, and some of these global stock markets overall that have had big bull moves will probably go through. You know, I, I'm still a long term bear on the dollar. I just think that in this kind of period where we're looking at a global recession, where you have Russia invading Ukraine, maybe China and Taiwan, the dollar is still king dollar. And so it's still going to be the strongest, even though longer term, 10 years from now, I do think the power of the dollar does wane significantly. So you're not in this camp that Bitcoin is going to become the world reserve currency, the dollar is going down, China is going to take over. That's not how bearish you are on the dollar. Um, so, so not in the near term. I, I actually do think that in the longer term. So, I don't think Bitcoin is going to be the reserve currency. I look at Bitcoin as more like the the digital gold. So, I think it becomes more of that commodity. Um, so, I think that's where where you see Bitcoin go. I actually do think the digital yuan does eventually become the reserve currency. It just takes so much time. I mean, you know. These countries are so addicted to everything being run in U.S. dollars that it takes just a long time for it to switch over. But I do think it's a process that will happen. And I do think as that switch happens to another reserve currency, remember, all these countries hold trillions, well, maybe not trillions, but at least hundreds of billions of dollars because it's the reserve currency and they have to do all these transactions. So as it, does, as it wanes as the reserve currency, these countries won't have to hold dollars as much and you'll see more and more dumping of the dollar on the open market. And that alone will create a situation where the dollar does decline. So I would say near term, you respect the dollar. I think you're going to have pullbacks, but it stays strong. Longer term, I am a bear on the dollar. So, so right now, crypto getting a little bit of a bid as the dollar has fallen. Um, per the chart, we're in this bigger wedge pattern. So again, if I zoom out, this is pretty remarkable wedge pattern where you basically had the all-time high down sloping trend line. If we can break above that, it gives you a little bit of a short-term short squeeze on Bitcoin. Overall, I don't see it lasting for very long, and I ultimately see more downside. Right now, my high-end target on Bitcoin is around the twelve to 13,000 level, which would put us right down here at this pivot. Um, right now, we're still hovering around that 2017 all-time high uh, before the last bear market. But I do think eventually it gets pushed below this level and collapses down to, again, 12 to 13,000. Uh, I know a lot of people have heard the headline of, like, Gareth says it could go as low as 3,500. Um, that's kind of a worst-case scenario for me, where if we really see, uh, you know, the financial markets collapse, we know that Bitcoin is kind of follows the financial markets. It hasn't become a kind of a goldish type thing yet. Then you could be looking at a $3,500 target. Long term, I love Bitcoin. I think there's a huge place in the economy, in the global economy for it. But but again, cycles are cycles. And we can't deny the fact that number one, we're in a bear cycle. Number two, this is the first bear cycle that you haven't had Fed printing of money, which means it probably is going to be a worse bear cycle than past bear cycles. And we haven't even corrected 80% yet which is what the past cycles did. The stock market has been more volatile than Bitcoin. I never thought I'd say that, but that's been the case. And then number two is that this quiet periods are the periods before big moves. So you know something big is coming. Think about the eye of a storm where it's very quiet, but then when you come out of the eye of the storm, it gets real crazy. So at some point, something is going to trigger here, either a big move up or a big move down. That, that's you know you're absolutely correct on that especially over the last week or so in bitcoin i was commenting on how the stock market was really falling until today uh the dollar was really shooting up and, and crypto really has gone sideways so i agree with you that's a short-term bullish indicator um again i wouldn't look at that as a longer term signal of a bottom yet sure. but short term absolutely and that kind of gives us gives us a play where where if we look at this here and let me just erase this trend line but you have this this kind of channel and look at where we've been hovering, right at the lows. And if you look here, we bounced here off of this line, we bounced. Now we've been hovering here and it's held up. So maybe we have one more trigger to go up to about 25,000. 
then the question is, can we break above that? And that's going to be the big question there. But but I wouldn't, you know, the way it's been acting, it's been very, very healthy for Bitcoin to be holding up while the stocks have been going down and while the dollar's been going up. The BOE, Fed, and other major central banks poured billions of dollars into the financial system via QE in the aftermath of the coronavirus-induced crash of 2020, triggering an unprecedented bull run in crypto and traditional markets. Now, however, rampant inflation has forced those central banks to reverse course, sending asset markets across the spectrum sharply lower in 2022. Bitcoin has plunged to less than $20,000 from just shy of $70,000 late in 2021. While the BOE's latest pledge to buy unlimited long-duration bonds looks like a new bout of QE, the bank has made it clear that the move is only a temporary one, mainly aimed at restoring orderly conditions. It's promised to unwind the purchases once the market stabilizes. Meanwhile, some in the crypto community wonder whether the Fed will follow suit. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.